The Saxons were a Germanic people who originated in what is now northern Germany and southern Denmark. Alongside their neighbors, the Angles and Jutes, they began migrating to Britain in the 5th century CE, following the Roman withdrawal from the island around 410 CE. Initially invited as mercenaries by native Britons to defend against other invaders, the Saxons soon turned into conquerors, establishing their control over much of what would become England. By the mid-6th century, Saxon kingdoms such as Wessex, Sussex, and Essex were prominent, often working in collaboration with the Angles, who formed kingdoms in the Midlands and the North. Saxon pottery, typically handmade in the early period, included utilitarian forms with simple designs. Over time, as they settled and interacted with other cultures, their ceramics grew more refined, influenced by Roman and native British techniques. Saxon architecture was similarly pragmatic, but evolving. Early settlements consisted of wooden halls and wattle and daub houses, but by the later Saxon period, stone construction became more common, especially in churches. Their conversion to Christianity began in earnest with the arrival of St. Augustine of Canterbury in 597 CE, who converted King Ethelbert of Kent. Over the next century, Christianity spread across Saxon Britain, facilitated by missionaries and influential leaders such as St. Cuthbert and King Edwin of Northumbria, who embraced the faith. Leadership among the Saxons was marked by both regional kings and legendary figures. Churdich, the founder of Wessex, is considered a progenitor of the later English monarchy, while Ethelbert of Kent played a key role in early Christianization. The Saxons' collaboration with the Angles forged a shared identity, eventually leading to the formation of a unified England under leaders like Alfred the Great in the 9th century. Together, the Angles and Saxons left an enduring legacy on the British Isles, shaping its language, culture, and political structures for centuries to come. For this video, I gathered the high-quality genomes of eight Saxons from the city of Suffolk in the UK. All the genomes are dated to 5th century AD. These samples resemble Norwegians, Icelanders, and other North Germanics with PCA-based ethnicity calculators like G25. I ran the eight Saxon samples through my trait predictor tool for DNA analysis, the purchase link for which you can find in the description of this video. Five out of eight samples were male, and two carried Y lineage I1A. Another two samples carried Y lineage I2A. Finally, another sample carried the Y lineage R1BL51. The most common predicted phenotype among the group is Norid, which four people scored. Alpinid, Tebid, Corded, and Hallstatt phenotypes were also present. Here is a morph of the average phenotype in this group. Among these eight Saxons from Suffolk, there were no people with brown eyes. For people had blue eyes, two people had green eyes, one person had blue eyes with amber center, and one person had hazel eyes. Among these eight Saxons from Suffolk, the most common hair color was dark blonde. Two people also had light brown, and two people had dark brown hair. One person had red hair. Nobody had light blonde or black hair. Six people had white skin color, and two people had olive skin tone. The most common hair texture among the eight Saxons from Suffolk was wavy, but two people did also have straight hair, and one person was predicted to have curly hair. Almost every sample was predicted to have Greek-shaped nose, except one sample, who was predicted to have a snub nose shape. Six of the eight samples had high odds of male pattern baldness, and two samples had average odds of male pattern baldness. Six samples were predicted to be shorter than average in height, and two samples were predicted to be taller than average. The samples had low odds of kidney stones. Almost all of them had very high odds of hemoglobin E disease and carried risk variants for it. They mostly had low odds of migraine. Most of the samples had average odds of lupus, but one sample scored high for it. Two samples had low odds of gout. Two samples had high odds of eczema. Two samples had high, and two samples had low odds of polycystic ovary syndrome. One sample had high, and one sample had low odds of age-related cataracts. The eight Saxon samples seemed to have a predisposition to age-related macular degeneration, because four samples had high, or very high predisposition to this condition. Two samples had high odds of epilepsy. One sample had high odds of asthma, and two samples had high odds of vitiligo. Three samples had high odds of myopia, the rest having average odds. 
Two samples had low odds of corneal astigmatism. Three samples had high odds of primary biliary cirrhosis, the rest having average odds. Two samples were predicted to be warriors, while five samples were warriors. Overall, this group of Saxons was strongly predisposed to a higher level of dopamine and worse stress tolerance. Six samples were predicted to have intermediate D2 receptor availability, while two samples were predicted to have increased availability of D2 receptor sites, leading to higher odds of bipolar and schizophrenia. Speaking of mental health, three samples had low odds of Tourette's, four samples had low odds of ADHD, three samples had low, and one sample had high odds of depression, and finally two samples had high and two samples had low odds of bipolar one. The Saxons selected were strongly predisposed to autism, with five samples scoring high odds of autism and only three samples scoring intermediate odds of autism. Almost every sample was lactase persistent. Seven out of eight Saxons carried European variants for lactase persistence. Every sample scored average for predicted levels of empathy on the basis of OXDR genotypes. Regarding muscle type and athleticism, the distribution of athletic or allele in ACTN3s are 577x in the Saxon population was comparable to European average, suggesting that as a group, they were about as athletic as the Europeans are. The Saxons had average odds of epithelial cancers on the basis of 8Q24 genotypes. One sample had high odds of breast cancer, and one sample had low odds. Three samples had high odds of glioma or brain cancer. Two samples had high odds of thyroid cancer. Five samples had very high predisposition to testicular cancer on the basis of KITLG genotypes. Moving on to blood cancers, the Saxons had a strong predisposition to polycythemia vera on the basis of JAKE, two genotypes, an average predisposition to leukemia. The Saxons had a low predisposition to allergies. Six people carried risk variants for rare diseases, and two people carried risk variants for Parkinson's disease. The Saxons had average odds of autoimmune disease on the basis of HLA genotypes. None of the Saxons carried risk variants for ankylosing spondylitis, which is good. Two samples had high odds for type 1 diabetes. Two samples had high odds for rheumatoid arthritis. Six out of eight samples were HLA DRB1 carriers and scored very high for odds of multiple sclerosis, a condition very common among modern English people. Every sample had intermediate levels of plasma homocysteine. Two samples had low odds of ischemic stroke. Two people had low odds of atrial fibrillation. One person had low odds of deep vein thrombosis. And three people had low odds of a generalized range of cardiovascular issues. The Saxons had a predisposition to lower odds of obesity. Only one sample scored high for risk of type 2 diabetes, while five samples scored low for risk of type 2 diabetes. Three samples also scored low for risk of Alzheimer's disease. Six samples had lower than average, and two samples had high odds of syncope. Five samples had low, and three samples had high levels of vitamin D for samples had lower than average, and four samples had higher than average levels of LDL cholesterol. Five samples had lower, and three samples had higher than average red blood cell count. Four samples had higher, and four samples had lower than average telomere length, predisposing the Saxons to average telomere lengths overall and average length of lifespan. Six people had iron levels that fall within the normal range, but one person had iron levels nearing anemia, and one person had elevated iron levels approaching hemochromatosis. The most common blood type among the Saxons of Suffolk was type O, which four people carried, followed by type A, which three people carried. Only one person carried blood type B. Thank you for watching the video until the end. If you enjoyed it, consider leaving a like and sharing. All relevant links will be in description.